Living by yourself on an island, not at all ideal, and the movie Castaway starring Tom Hanks has me thanking my lucky stars, I won't ever have to experience this. But on Survivor, it can happen, and for many players, it has. Exile Island is a place where typically one player lives by themselves for upwards to three days. No food, no shelter, nothing but a pot, flint, and machete. It sounds like torture, and for many it is, but over the course of Survivor, it evolves with ever-changing game-bending twists. By the way, thanks for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. For only a few bucks a month on Patreon, you can pick what videos I make, watch all this channel's content early, chat with other fans of the show, and even get exclusive videos every month. Patreon makes this channel financially feasible to run, so thank you for your support. It all begins in Season 10, Survivor Palau. Stephanie LaGrosa is the last surviving member of her tribe, and her living all alone on her tribe's beach was riveting for audiences, and Survivor knew they had a hit idea on their hands, so they quickly scrambled a plan together mid-season to add a new twist to the show for just one episode to see how it would work out. So in episode 10 of this season, Jeff reveals this for the first time to the players and really to us as an audience. One more thing. Today's challenge also reveals how you handle fear. The first person to bail on this challenge will face the ultimate test of fear. You'll be taken to a new beach and abandoned there tonight to live on your own. You'll have flint and steel, you'll have a machete, you'll have a jury can full of water, and you'll have some fishing gear. So if you've learned anything in your first 26 days out here, you should be fine. If not, it's gonna be a miserable night. Truly out of left field. Janu drops out of the challenge first and upon arriving at Exile, all she has is a pot, flint, and machete. It seems like Exile Island would beat her down since she is notorious this season for being sick, having low energy, and eventually quitting. However, she actually thrives on Exile and it gives her a nice little redemption arc. Yesterday, I didn't even wanna be here. But maybe God was just telling me, hold on a little bit more because this is the feeling you were supposed to get. So who knows, every day brings new experiences and right now, I am probably the happiest that I have been in these 26 days because it's all about me and this little island. But yeah, it's only a one episode thing in Palau, but in season 12, Exile Island, it is a season long twist that seems fully fleshed out and even has some effort put into it. What makes this one so unique, unlike in Palau, is that it now has a massive skull on it and sometimes people will go there with one other person. But really, it's pitched by Jeff as this place you don't wanna be on since you are away from your tribe mates, which hurts your ability to bond and strategize with them. A good point. At the end of the season, they do burn the massive skull in a symbolic gesture to show the end of Exile Island and the end of the season, which I really like. Plus, there's one other element to Exile Island. Hidden somewhere on this island is an immunity idol. Ooh. Ooh. So while you're out here trying to figure out how to survive, you ought to be looking for it. If you find the idol, you can share that information with whoever you want. You can keep it a secret, it's up to you. The important thing to remember is that you can use it anytime up through the final four. But once there are only three of you remaining, the idol can be used no more. And that super idol becomes a big deal throughout the season as there's only one and it is way overpowered. This version of Exile Island actually grants someone immunity for the first time as well, since Bruce doesn't get selected for a tribe and gets to stay on it until someone else gets voted out. However, in episode four, the game-changing moment on this island takes place. The hidden immunity idol. That's the there. Oh, totally. Break the bottle and retrieve the hidden talisman. The talisman is beautiful. This makes the whole trip out here worthwhile. I mean, they ended up doing me a big favor. That immunity idol in my back pocket is definitely my ace in the hole. That super idol will keep him safe through the final four, but despite how overpowered this twist is that came from Exile Island, it still is carried on to the next season. That season being Cook Islands, and unlike in the prior season, this Exile Island has a new look. Instead of a massive skull, it is a shipwreck instead. Also this season, it isn't the winning tribe who will send someone from the losing tribe to exile. Instead, it gets reversed, and the losing tribe sends someone from a winning tribe instead. It sounds cool on paper, but it's not actually actually a great idea because this means that someone from a winning tribe who's already doing well has the possibility of finding this season's super idol. The losing tribe will choose one person from any of the other three tribes 
to go to Exile Island. It is a big disadvantage to be separated from your tribe this early in the game. The silver lining to Exile Island is hidden somewhere on the island is an immunity idol that will protect you at Tribal Council. It's good up through the final four. So in season 12, it took four episodes for someone to find the super idol, but not in Cook Islands. We see Penner have a great idea of how to start looking for it in the premiere, but it's really Yule who big brains the whole operation and finds the idol in only episode two, kind of killing the intrigue of who will find it early. So while Exile Island then becomes a purely social move to hurt someone's game, the idol it has gifted Yule is not as unstoppable as we saw in Panama, as Yule's tribemate says he had a dream about how to get rid of the person who holds the idol. I had this dream I was dealing with all these supernatural people and with supernatural power and there's a shaman lady like this old lady and she had all kinds of credit card applications and she asked me if I have an American Express card or these all the stuff I'm looking at it and I said what do I need it for she said well you need three of that and three of that and I thought three and three that's how you can defeat the immunity idol you can flush it out and I woke up and I go, whoa, bland voodoo. A crazy story indeed. What does credit cards have to do with anything? I don't know. But this plan doesn't actually take place this season. But like Yule says, it is brilliant. I also want to note that Yule is the first person to find a hidden immunity idol on Exile and win the game. Moving on to season 14 Fiji, we see the return of Exile. And I absolutely love the look of this island combined with the watchtower. This tops the design of any Exile island in any season, in my opinion. For this season, they drop the super idol entirely, and instead of hiding one on exile, they hide regular hidden immunity idols at the tribal camps. When Sylvia goes to get the first clue of the season, she realizes... Here you won't find the idol you crave. Search back at your camp if you hope to be saved. I like this idea as it then creates more drama in looking for the idol and gives players more opportunities to find it versus someone having all the time in the world and it being found so early like we saw with Yule and Terry. Plus fake idols really get their birth in the show proper here due to this twist. We then see Exile Island skip China and we move on to season 16, Micronesia. This time Exile Island is changed up as now two people go to exile together every time throughout the whole pre-merge, one person from each tribe. And this changes up the social dynamics entirely, especially since the idol is now back to being hidden somewhere around Exile Island. And just because two people are there together doesn't mean they have to help each other look for it. Multiple idols are hidden here throughout the season, including one that gets found by a player, which the show doesn't tell us about until they play it. But truly Micronesia brings an even better storyline because of Exile Island. It's the story of Ozzy, Jason, Eliza, and a stick. So in episode four, Ozzy and Kathy go to exile together where Ozzy finds the regular idol without her seeing and says, hey, I need to make a fake one to cover up the fact that I found this one to hopefully trick someone else who finds this. But Ozzy kind of puts minimal effort into the endeavor. I'm just gonna try and uh, fashion some sort of fake idol. This is Igor, the immunity idol, the fake immunity idol. <laughs> God, I hope someone finds it and tries to play it. Surely no one will believe that. It's just a stick with a face lazily carved on it. Anyways, in episode six, Jason goes on an idol hunt while in exile and he finds Ozzy's fake and obviously he doesn't believe it's real. Well, I guess this is the hidden immunity idol. Uh, it's not much, but it's a carving of a piece of wood with the little guy on it and uh, this is pretty incredible, so you know I'm gonna have to hold on this tight. This means Ozzy doesn't have it. I have it, so this is really good for me. I'm sorry, what? How does he think it's real? I have no idea, but he's fully in on this. He doesn't realize it later either. So much so that up through episode nine, he thinks it's real and even tells Eliza that, hey, if you're in danger, I'll give you my idol so you can save yourself. And of course, Eliza's excited because she hasn't seen the idol yet. But when Eliza is in danger and Jason reveals it to her for the first time. This is an This is an This is an It's not the idol. It is the idol. It's not the idol. Yes, it is. Ozzy must have put it in there. He must have the real thing. That's not the idol. What is it? It's a stick. I know. It has a face on it. Don't worry. Ozzy put it on there and made a face on it. No, he didn't. It's not the idol. Why do you say that? Because that can't be the idol. Why not? Because it's just a stick. I know. 
This whole storyline is absurd and one of the greatest things Exile Island has ever produced. We move on to Season 17 Gabon, where due to the location they chose, Exile is no longer an island despite the name. It's more of a landlocked location. Now when a player gets sent there, they have a choice. They can either choose an idol clue for an idol hidden somewhere around Exile, or they can choose comfort and snack on delicious fruit while sleeping in a covered shack. You've arrived in Exile, a lovely lonely place in this Garden of Eden a difficult choice you'll face. One choice provides an apple, one choice provides direction. Spend your time in idle comfort or seek idle protection. Dan goes the first episode, but after that, no one else goes the entire pre-merge except for Sugar. She sets the record for visits in a season to exile, and it kind of becomes a cruel joke that starts with her smiling and ends with her crying. For her first visit to exile, she picks the clue and finds the idol. Impressive given she is only the second person to have been sent to exile this season. But in episode three, she has to go back to exile because no one picks her for her tribe. So like Bruce in season 12, she has to wait at exile until a spot opens up and this time she picks when i got to exile there was a choice between comfort and the clue and i already have the idol so i chose comfort <laughs> i walked up to my sugar shack it was like christmas morning there was pineapple and oranges and apples and coconut this was so good <laughs> She's really making lemonade out of lemons, that is until episode four, where she gets sent there once again, but this time she tries to laugh through the pain. She might as well have her mail forwarded there because Sugar's going again. And why sending Sugar again? No strategy, pur purely comedy. <laughs> on the plus side, she keeps getting more and more food on Exile, but then in episode five, she just cries. She's like, I can't believe I keep getting to eat while my tribe just suffers. And then, of course, in episode six, she sent once again. Sugar goes to exile five times. It's really a cruel joke. If you thought Gabon ended on a sad note, well, season 18, Token Chains is all highs. This season may be peak Exile Island as it provides so many iconic moments. The first is the change on how someone now gets to choose who goes to Exile Island with them. The urns from Gabon return, but this time each player gets one urn, but only one of those urns contains an idle clue, while the other contains absolutely nothing. The idle clue also presents the opportunity to switch tribes, but no one ever seriously considers that offer. The big storyline this season is about the rise and fall of the Exile Alliance, an alliance made between two different tribes on Exile Island that starts with Brendan and Taj. Once we make it to the merge, we would have a four-way uh, alliance that nobody knows about. That nobody knows about. Exactly. If Brendan and I can line up our cards exactly the way we want them, we'll have a secret four-way alliance that no one knows about. So it's gonna slap them behind the head. They won't even know it's coming. I made a video detailing this fascinating strategic story that I will link in the description below. But later on in episode 12, Taj wins the loved one's visit at the Survivor auction. And with that, she gets to be with her husband on Exile Island overnight. And, uh... She wants to make Marvin Gaye proud. My husband jumps out from behind a tree and he just looked like a, a, an angel. He looked like a big old muscle band. I just wanted to take him to the side and have a conjugal visit. But despite all of these amazing moments that take place on Exile Island throughout this whole video, nothing tops coach not wanting to go to Exile, practically begging to not be sent. And then when he is forced to go, he takes the martyr approach and really hams it up. Unbreakable unbending, unyielding, immeasurable, immovable, invincible. It's going to be like the ancient American Indians that are my ancestors they used to go out into the wilderness for 48 hours and they would commune with the creator of the universe and they would become men. Well, I'm already a man, so this would just make me more of a man, but this is going to be an adventure. Thank you for creating me as an individual. I ask that you would help me to forgive Erin as she's back in camp thinking, negative thoughts about me. Coach, returning from Exile Island. When Coach returned from Exile with his cane and he's limping and I'm thinking, this guy is such a drama queen. He's so dramatic. Any 37-year-old man who thinks he's a dragon slayer belongs in a mental institution. They need to come get him. Token Cheese was really peak Exile Island, so much so that the twist disappears for 11 seasons when it pops back up as a last-minute production decision on season 29, San Juan del Sur. While the idea of Exile Island is twisted into multiple 
multiple other islands we see on other seasons like Redemption Island, Ghost Island, Island of the Idols, Edge of Extinction, etc, etc. The pure Exile Island experience is gone until San Juan del Sur. This season is blood versus water, loved ones competing against each other, so husband versus wife, brother versus sister, father versus daughter, you get the idea. So every episode there is a duel between a loved one's pair and the loser goes to exile. Loser of this challenge will be sent to Exile Island, where you will live with no shelter and very little food. Bad news is you will not be back at camp in those early moments when you are trying to form the all-important alliances that can carry you through this game. Despite being the one who sends your loved one to exile, there is the silver lining that not only do they have a 50-50 shot of getting an idol clue, just like in Token Chains, but also you get to choose who from your tribe goes with them to exile. Basically, the show wants to see that exile alliance from Token Chains again. This season adds even more drama because you get things happening on exile, like Jeremy and John Rocker going where Jeremy says, Here's the idol clue I got, and in return, I want you to save my wife Val from elimination. It's wild. But once again, Exile Island disappears from our screens until season 32, Ko Rong, where it unofficially returns as a makeshift place for the person that doesn't draw the right buff to be on a proper tribe and has to wait for someone else to be voted out. Whoever draws the red buff will go back to Brawn Beach alone, where you will have to fend for yourself. Food, fire, water, the works. The good news is, while you're on Brawn Beach, you will not participate in the next immunity challenge. Therefore, you won't go to tribal council. You can't be voted out. Bad news, while you are on Brawn Beach, you won't be able to strategize and make new alliances. You will have to rely on your current alliances to keep you tight until you can get back in the game. This one is by a mile the most boring as Julia basically sleeps and is dehydrated despite being as simple as Palau's this Exile Island contains nothing inspiring like Janu's trip did. So Exile Island does not come back again until season 34 Game Changers where like multiple players before her Debbie doesn't end up on any tribe due to a swap and as a result is sent to Exile Island only this time it isn't an island it's a twist as it is a luxurious ship with food drink and best of all depending on what your definition of best of all is john cochran randomly showing up to give strategic advice i wonder if sandra diaz twine had shown up on exile island this season instead of debbie if john still comes out to give advice since she has one more than he has anyways cochran says yeah debbie's a terrible player upon first meeting debbie it was immediately obvious that one of her fatal flaws is overconfidence she seemed very self-assured that everything was going to go her way look overconfidence and a sense of comfort is you know poisonous in this game season 37 david versus goliath marks the reappearance of a proper exile island it is actually an island it isn't a ship or a landlocked area or even an unofficial one that's really just an old tribe's camp. Like many players before him, Carl is sent to exile since he is the odd man out of a tribe swap, but unlike anyone else before him, he is given the opportunity to find the first ever hidden immunity idol nullifier. This is an idol nullifier. It blocks the use of an idol by any other player. This ends up making a massive change in the merge game for the underdog David tribe, as that idol nullifier guarantees the removal of a Goliath player. This is a hidden immunity idol. And this is the idol nullifier. Four seasons later in Survivor 41, we see Exile Island return and this time the overpower advantages that we kind of left behind in seasons 12 and 13 make a return but in a whole new way. So to get to Exile Island this season, it's a bit complicated but let me try to simplify it. Two players get screwed on drawing rocks for teams at a reward slash immunity challenge and whichever team wins reward gets to pick which of the two people goes to exile. In this situation, they lie about how they chose Erica to go but that's not important right now. But what is important is while Erica's on Exile Island, Jeff Probst just appears and says, hey, I got a game changing opportunity for you. If you want to do nothing, then just leave everything as it is. But if you want to make history by changing history, 
smash the hourglass. Oh my gosh. Mind you, Jeff hasn't been on Exile since season 12 when he just introduced it as a thing with the super idol. So Jeff on Exile Island means uh, an overpowered twist is coming your way. Basically, Erica is given the choice to keep immunity in the hands of the team that won it or she can smash the hourglass and give immunity to the players who lost, including herself. This is a massive change that seems wholly unfair, but as Deshaun says later in the episode, what is fair? This episode cliff hangs, and then at the next challenge we see... I smash the hourglass and I change the course of history. Obviously she smashes the hourglass. Why wouldn't she? When you have a choice between immunity and no immunity, you should always pick immunity. So what do you think about Exile Island? When do you think it will return next? And what should they do the next time they use this twist? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.